it's the lawyer in me, John. I'd like to hear all the evidence before I uh, come to that uh, uh, come to that con conclusion. And we do still have the inquiry going along. Um, I suppose the problem is, has not helped himself, has he, by calling for people to resign left, right, and centre. Um, uh, on almost anything that's gone wrong on other ministers' watch. So there's a, there's a little bit uh, of having uh, uh, brought that sort of criticism mm. upon himself. Yeah, that is what opposition... Uh, well, look, the, the Prime Minister, government ministers, they're really feeling the pressure here. They are indeed, and we are expecting that statement in the House of Commons at around 6.30, maybe slightly before. Now, my expectation of that statement will be essentially a, an update of where things have got to. Of course, a Kevin Hollenrake, who's the minister responsible in the business department, met with Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, at, around lunchtime today. That meeting had been brought forward. It was originally planned for next week. So that shows you the government does intend to try and move as quickly as it can here. But there are some big questions and some problems potentially with the solutions that the government is trying to find. Some of those are about process, some of them are about the legal system. I think what's very clear is the Prime Minister and others share a determination now that compensation should be paid out as soon as possible. But if you want to get into the real detail of why it isn't paid out quickly, it's often dependent on individual cases. And that means that those cases have to be looked through by legal teams. They have to be assessed. That slows everything down. Now, there is a possibility you could give a blanket payment, but some people might say, well, hang on, no, I've waited this long. I want my case to be looked at fully. And the same goes for exoneration. You know, you could say, well, anybody who's been convicted automatically now is pardoned. But for some people who've gone through that court process, they feel really the only solution would be for them to go back through the appeals court and to be exonerated in that way. So yes. it's a bit more complicated than just the Prime Minister or another minister, you know, writing this out of history. It doesn't work quite like that. Yeah, so and when the minister in the business department, Kevin Holdingwick, gets on his feet in the House of Commons, we'll have that for you live here uh, on Times Radio on Drive. Trust me, you'll miss none of that. It is all, it is all okay, really extraordinary testament to the power of a TV drama. I mean, the Times has been very much on the front of this story from the from the beginning with its investigative unit, just breaking the story, this extraordinary story, and and it got a certain amount of attention, a good deal of attention. But it was the drama that really put rocket boosters under it. Well, I think what it shows you, and actually what many of those sub-postmasters themselves recognised, was that the way to get fundamental change in a system like government and post office is to get the public on your side. And yes, newspapers do do that often, and so can you know other means of journalism. But the best way to do that is with something like this, which you know has captured the nation's attention and, and heart, really. And I think it's the personal elements to these stories, the, the people that you're hearing from who lost everything, including their reputation, some of them their lives, that's gone to the, to the heart of this issue. I think the difficulty for politicians reflecting on this is why has it been in the too difficult box for so long? Yeah. Why have successive ministers not decided to really try and do something about this? And even for the, you know, Rishi Sunak, who was a former chancellor, who was involved in the compensation scheme, there are many people in positions of power in this government and previous ones who would have been able to, if they just looked a little bit closer, Ed Davey obviously is an obvious case that we're talking a lot about today, then we may have been able to get to this solution more quickly. I mean, Ed Davey, who's now, of course, the Lib Dem leader, who was then in the coalition government with the Conservatives, who was a minister with responsibility for the post office. A lot of fingers are being pointed at Ed Davey. Also, they're fair to say he wasn't the only post office minister during this scandal, which played out over a number of years. It did. I think the reason why a lot of fingers, as you say, are pointing at Ed Davey is because he was in post at the time when a lot of these cases were coming to light in the media in a, in a much more public way. We were seeing a lot more reporting of them. We were starting to understand the scale of this injustice. And I think... There are those who say if Ed Davey, when he had got into office, had just decided to scratch a little bit deeper, ask a few more questions, maybe choose not to automatically believe the institution of the post office, as some would say all ministers ought to do, then he may have been able to uncover this. He may have been able to help speed up this process of justice. I think mm. the fact that he, you know, evidently he says he was lied to, he says he was following the directions of, of his office. I'm sure those things are true. But as a minister with such a position of power, you have the ability to say, well, hang on a minute, I hear what you're saying, but there are all these other people who are saying that you're lying to me and I'm mm. going to try and find out a little bit more about it. And, you know, there was reporting at the time that would have helped him to do that. Yeah, well, those are absolutely fair points. Although a number of other ministers might have taken the initiative because the thing totally. was still in the air. And we thank you so much, Kate. Let's talk again a bit later on Kate McCann, our political editor. Now, hi to Bob Neal. So Bob Neal, Conservative MP, who's also chair of the Justice Committee at Westminster. Bob, hi. 
Hi, John. Good to see you. Hi, good to have you with us, Bob. I mean, there's no doubt, is there now? We're talking about serious wrong and serious harm being done and about an official response, which was nothing short of shameful. Well, clearly, the, the, these poor people have been desperately badly let down, uh, both by the post office uh, and by, by the system. So we need to put that right. And I think it is fair to say that the scale of this has grown and become more apparent uh, as, as we've gone along, as, as Kate has said, but clearly uh, the response uh, wasn't sufficient. Uh, uh, my committee uh, looked at the whole question of private prosecutions back in um, late 2020, early 2021, John. Yes. Um, and that was partly uh, triggered by the post office. There were some other issues as well. And at that stage, I think only about 39 um, cases had got to the Court of Appeal. So we, we didn't yet know the scale of it. Um, we made some recommendations which the government did not, in fact, sorry about that, which the government didn't, didn't follow through, and um, which I think they should revisit uh, about making sure uh, that all private prosecutions are, are uh, subject to supervision by the Chief Inspector of Prosecutions. Mm. And if they can't guarantee a proper standard of impartiality and integrity, they should lose the right. Uh, to uh, carry out private prosecutions. Mm. Um, I rather suspect that would have happened to the post office if we had been examined in that way. And you, I think the key yeah. thing from my perspective is to speed up both the compensation process and in particular the appeals uh, process. And you believe and it is complicated yeah. for the reasons that you and Kate have just been discussing. Right, and you, and you, you think now, Bob, that a prosecution of responsible individuals at the post office, that would be appropriate now, do you? And what about the removal of Paula Vanell's CBI? Is that something you want to see now? Well, I'm in the same position as, uh, as the Prime Minister and, and Robert Buckton, my, my colleague earlier. Um, uh, clearly, uh, people are outraged by what has happened. Uh, and uh, when there's been massive failure presided over by someone, uh, if the process with the Honours Committee uh, goes through its due course, then so be it. Um, you know, whether she keeps it up until then is a matter of her own conscience. Uh, but I entirely support the view that uh, so grave is the situation that the appropriate committee needs to, to take a look at that. Mm. But and what about because accountability? The key thing from my point of view, yeah. is to say, speeding up the appeals and try and get these convictions quashed. Indeed. And what about accountability on the political front? I mean, the the guy who's now the Lib Dem leader, Ed Davey, was the post office, one of the post office ministers during all of this, at a critical t time in the case of Ed Davey. It wasn't just Ed Davey, though, was it? No, I, I mean, that's perfectly fair. The, there was a turnover of ministers. I think as it happened, that post, I think, was all always fo filled by a, a, a Lib Dem tree, uh, the coalition, but I just didn't make that as a statement of fact rather than anything else. Um, you know, I, I was a minister uh, at that time. Um, issues do get raised with you, and sometimes you have to be prepared to, to push back. Um, I'm sure that advice, which was bland and covered the post office's back, was given to his office, but I do think... Uh, obviously, we all have to then be prepared, not necessarily to take that at face value. That's mm. part of one's job as a minister. I don't think Ed has necessarily helped his position by um, uh, being quite critical of others uh, in the past. But, I mean, that's all I'd say on that. Um, uh, my main concern mm. uh, is, to say, sorting out uh, the problem yeah. uh, for, in the first instance for the post uh, masters and mistresses. And secondly, to make sure that we make changes to the uh, transparency and accountability of, of private prosecution systems. And you're not one of those who say Ed Davies should step down as Lib Dem leader as an acknowledgement of the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the responsibility that he, he bears and bore and didn't live up to? Well, I, maybe it's the lawyer in me, John. I'd like to hear all the evidence before I uh, come to that uh, uh, come to that con conclusion. And we do still have the inquiry going along. Um, I suppose the problem is Ed's not helped himself, has he, by calling for people to resign left, right and centre um, uh, on almost anything that's gone wrong on other ministers' watch. So there's a, there's a little bit uh, of having uh, uh, brought that sort of criticism mm. upon himself. Yeah, that is what attitude. opposition politicians do, isn't it? You call... It's what they do. And unfortunately, sometimes when you've been in government, it can come back and bite you in the bottom sort of thing. Yeah. Now, but, no, uh, right now you, you, you want to see the any question of appealing... Um, taken away from the post office. That's that's very clear. And what else should be done? Because surely a lot needs to be done, given what these, what so many people went through. Well, that's right. I think in terms of speeding up the appeal process, I think Kate puts it very fairly. Um, for some people, um, a, a pardon, for example, um, wouldn't be enough because no. uh, they will feel, I was convicted by a court. I want that conviction to be quashed yes. by a court. And there is a constitutional point that, you know, um, 
the idea that we legislate, for example, would be difficult because the courts are independent from Parliament. They operate independently. So what I want to do is to find the means of speeding uh, the appeals against conviction up, up and at the same time protect the independence of the court. What I think we should perhaps do, and I suggest, is this. First of all, uh, the Crown Prosecution Service could indeed take over the conduct of the prosecutions and they would then able, be able to say, look, we've reviewed the papers and we do not oppose these appeals, first point. To do that, they would need, I think, some extra resources. Um, there's precedent again for doing that. The Serious Fraud Office used to get what we call a blockbuster, or sort of surge funding to deal with bits of demand. And you could bring in um, uh, independent barristers in particular who could be brought in short term to review all the papers um, uh, to get those ready for court. The second thing we'd need to do, actually, is to have for the Lord Chancellor uh, to have a conversation with the Lady Chief Justice, Baroness Carr, to make sure that there is sufficient court resource available to deal with it. Um, because it is perfectly possible to consolidate uh, appeals where uh, they uh, all turn upon the same facts and law, which is pretty much the case here. You know, what, what, what did these convictions depend upon? Horizon uh, and nothing else. And then there's probably hundreds in that category. You could try and consolidate all of those to save time. But uh, the Court of Appeal at the moment is a very hard push. It is working flat out. Uh, and uh, we have a statutory limit on the number of High Court judges, uh, judges in the Court of Appeal, who are available to hear those cases. Uh, and uh, if we're not careful, other cases could be pushed back. So again, uh, there's going to have to be some resource made available to, to the judiciary yeah. to make sure they've got the judges and simply the court space available to hear them. Okay. Now, none of that's impossible, John. But it does need us working on that. I know Alex Chalk, to be fair to him, started work on this uh, before Christmas, so before um, uh, the um, Mr Bates versus the Post Office programme aired. So Alex has been uh, quick on moving on that, but I certainly think we should uh, urge him and his colleagues to, to, to have all support from the Treasury, for example, uh, to, to get this moving swiftly. All right, Bob, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. That's Sir Bob Neill, the Conservative Chair of the Justice Committee of Westminster on this Post Office scandal.